Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over the future value function in Excel. Now I've done this in the past in another video, but I want to modify this one a little bit more. And I want to do a future value assuming the person already has some existing funds. And to go along with this, I'd also like to find out, well, what if the person is not getting the exact same interest rate every year? What if their interest rate, you know, or the rate of return really, changes? maybe not year by year, but at least every few years. This way you can kind of factor in recessions or boom years. Okay, so I'm going to create a, a calendar, a kind of a multi-stage calendar here. I've got a blank Excel worksheet, and I just need to give myself some labels to kind of explain what I'm going to do, and that way it'll make data entry a little bit easier down the road. So, and I can always tweak these as we go here, but I'm going to go ahead and start off with um, starting balance okay this is going to be the the amount that our person our investor our saver has at the beginning so let's say you're starting this process and maybe you've got uh, 20,000 saved up so I'm just going to go and plug in 20,000 there then I'm going to go ahead and put in the term time horizon time horizon is simply a finance or investing term how much time do you have left in years in fact let's just make a little notation that this is going to be in years and let's say for this first block of time we're going to be interested in the next four years okay now we're going to also put in monthly investment and let's say for the next four years, this person's going to be putting in 400 a month. And we also need rate of return. Okay. And let's say for the next four years, we're going to do, uh, oops, 11% rate of return. And then after all that is said and done, we're going to have an ending account value and this is where we're going to use the future value function to really help us out so let's go ahead and start this off equals FV parentheses and I'm just gonna let the screen tips here kinda of help me out my rate which is an annual rate of return needs to be converted to monthly so I'm gonna click on the cell that contains my rate of return I'm gonna divide that by 12 to get a monthly rate of return comma the number of periods involved will be the number of years, the cell containing the number of years, times 12 to figure out the number of months. So I've got four years, 12 months per year. Ultimately, that's going to be 48 months. Comma. My payment. This is uh, money that's leaving me, so I'm going to do a little minus sign and then click on the cell that contains my monthly investment amount. Comma. Now I get to the present value area. Now I hadn't used present value before in, in one of my earlier videos, so this time it's going to come in handy. If you assume that your saving is going to start from a point of zero, then you would ignore this step. And the little brackets around these particular arguments in the function indicate that they're optional parameters or optional arguments. But I want to use one now, and I'm going to put in a minus sign and click on the cell that contains my starting balance. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Um, by the way, type is simply if you're putting your money in at the beginning of the period or the end of the period. Obviously, if you put your money at the beginning of the period, that will give you more periods of compounding, so that can affect your numbers, but we're just going to keep it at the default here. There we go. So this is my result. Person starts with $20,000. They save. 400 per month for four years and they get an 11 percent annual rate of return after four years they will have 54,974 okay that's a simple future value function assuming that the person has something already saved up an existing present value um, let me just go ahead and clean these numbers up a little bit I'm going to um, select a few of my values here put them into currency mode and I'll just go ahead and hide the, the decimals and that just gives me a little bit of information there. All right, now, so that's for the first four years. Let's take this on to the next group of years. Let's say we have a six-year period coming up. 
And for this one, the starting balance is going to be equal to the ending account value from the previous group. Okay. This time, though, the person's going to be able to save a lot more. You know, maybe they've paid off some debt. So maybe now they can save uh, 700 per month for a while. And let's go ahead and keep the rate of return at the same, though. 11%. Okay, and I'll just kind of repeat my future value function here. I'm going to go a little bit faster on this one. My interest rate divided by 12, comma, number of years times 12, comma, negative version of the cell containing my monthly payment, comma, negative version of the cell containing my starting balance or present value, closing parentheses, enter. Okay, so now we've got some more information. Keep in mind, 10 years have now passed. So after 10 years, this person is going to have $176,000, almost $177,000 saved up. This, of course, assumes, assumes that in the first four years, they saved $400 a month. In the latter six years, they saved $700 a month, getting an about 11% return. Okay, now things are really moving along here. We can do a lot of autofill for this next one. I'm going to go and select this group of cells. Autofill over, make sure I have plenty of room here. And there we can see my starting balance for the next group is equal to my ending balance from the previous group. Uh, for this time, let's go ahead and do a three year period. And let's say the person is now saving 200 a month. And instead of an 11% return, what if they are getting a negative 5%? Maybe there's a three year period where they're actually getting a negative 5% return, okay? And let's see what happens here. Uh, I'm just going to double click. Actually, we can see our function up here to make sure everything is still accurate. Let's see, D5, there it is, divided by 12. D3, the number of years, times 12. Negative D4 is the monthly investment. Negative D2, okay, that is my initial balance. So now 13 years have passed. The person saved 400 a month for the first four, 700 a month for the next six, 200 a month for the last three. They had 11% return in the first 10 years, and then they went down to a negative 5% return for a three-year period. And their account balance is now about 158, 983, 94. Okay, so by using this particular technique, you can give yourself a more accurate calculator of changing interest rates and, of course, changing investment amounts. For some years, you'll be able to invest more. Some years, you'll be able to invest less. Um, some years, you have a great rate of return. Some years, you have a poor rate of return and all kinds of things in between. Now, you could do something very similar on a year-by-year -year basis. Now, if you're going to go year by year, I might not suggest that you do this horizontal layout that you see that I've got going on here. You might do a more vertical layout that looks a lot more like an amortization table. Um, let me give one of those a try just so you can see what I'm talking about.